Over in the kingdom of Thalion, we find Demon Lord Leon being teased by an old friend. They've known each other since his days as a hero, yet her pushy attitude still irritates him. Leon exclaims this to be serious, but Helmesi is already aware Rimuru has those children. To his surprise, she even brings up Shizu, prompting him to state he'd prefer to talk through this understanding with the slime. It's explained the kids are well taken care of, as Leon pleads to know if one of them is named Chloe. She admits that to be true, and states Shizu never trusted him because he tries to handle everything alone. Seemingly out of the blue, Elmesia asks if his failure to eliminate Cerberus, the Rosos, or Luminous is the reason he's so dreary. From her perspective, Rimuru and Luminous are harmless, but the Rosos have been suspiciously moving south. If that's true, then humanity will be defenseless against Gi's demons, so she offers to transport him north with a dragon warship. Now, it's more than obvious this is probably a trap, but Leon still refuses to back down. Then just before departing, he drops the news that Jean has gone missing. I'd like to take a moment to address the comments asking where I read these books slash manga. Of course, I recommend buying them through legitimate sources. However, if you choose to find them by other means, then you need to keep your device safe while doing so. That's why this video is partnered with NordVPN, who's offering you an exclusive deal. So picture this, you're harmlessly browsing the internet when you stumble across a link offering you that new light novel you wanted, completely free. You click it, download it, and stay up all night binge reading to your heart's content. Then three weeks later, your computer blue screens, and the IT guy charges you hundreds of dollars to remove the malware that was hidden behind that free download. This entire situation could have been avoided if you were using NordVPN. You see, NordVPN offers an additional function known as threat protection. After downloading, you have to activate this separately, but it warns you when a website might be dangerous and also scans files as you're downloading them in order to prevent malware from being installed. Claim your exclusive deal right now. Just go to nordvpn.com slash unseen whispers. Signing up through my link will earn you four bonus months alongside a 30 day money back guarantee. Then let's not forget, you can use a VPN to bypass region restricted content, AKA switch your location to Japan in order to gain access to a multitude of new anime on Netflix. Once again, go to nordvpn.com slash unseen whispers to claim your exclusive deal. You can also just click the link in the description and or pinned comment. It's morning in the cathedral when a soldier bursts inside announcing they're under attack. Our demon lord worries for the children, but Venom is already there. Teleporting, they find the orchestra frozen in fear, until Shion exclaims nobody is getting to them, and thus orders the practicing to resume. Rimuru then tells the kids to stay here, assigning Shion and Diablo to guard them. The invaders make their way inside as Hinata steps up to confront the old man, who just ordered Maria to find Luminous. Our slime gives a polite greeting, but Granville snaps back, declaring him to be the reason Maribel is dead. With no other options, Rimuru prepares to fight, but Nikolas and three of the captains cut in. Even while perfectly coordinating their attacks, Granville is easily able to defend, though this gives Nikolas time to cast Disintegration. Panicking, Hinata orders everyone to step back, just as Granville transforms the Disintegration spell into his own Melt Slash. She dives in, blocking his sword, as everyone else is sent flying. But luckily, Rimuru's absolute defense kept them alive. A massive explosion then shakes the earth, causing Granville to thank Razul for the assistance. Our slime tries to flee to the children, but is met by ten otherworlders blocking his path. It's obvious they're each under a curse just like Glinda, and Cranville wonders if our kind slime can bring himself to kill these innocent people. It stings knowing that Taunt is correct, but it's not like these otherworlders are a real threat anyways. Hinata and Granville, on the other hand, seem evenly matched. I'm unable to determine Granville's true strength. Using magic sense, our demon lord spots Shion and Diablo, combating an armored opponent. This single, non-human warrior contains more magicals than both secretaries combined. Though the main problem is that Diablo seems distracted by something. Unusual rift in space detected. So he orders Ranga to go support Shion instead. Using thought communication, you learn this warrior is an insect race, which just so happens to be demon kind's natural enemy. Shion tells Mr. Vice Secretary to get out of here, but he's earnestly worried for her survival. That was unexpected, and is followed by Shion using his name for the very first time. Thus, Diablo leaves to deal with his distraction, but not before ordering Venom to protect the kids, even if it takes his life. Now outside the city, a woman announces Noir is late, so he asks Blue, aka Rain, to use his real name. Rimuru is then insulted as a weakling, prompting Diablo to wonder if her goal is a swift death. 
She's been looking forward to this, and you learn she absolutely despises Diablo's attitude, and also that he once fought Guy to a draw. You see, Noir and Rouge used to be rivals, but that all changed when Rouge evolved, while well, Noir chose not to. Growing angry at his incessant dodging, Rain sets off a point-blank explosion. It's negated as a massive magic circle appears under her feet. She can't believe he's been drawing this massive anti-demon spell, and recognizes it to be disintegration, which is only made possible by Diablo's unwavering faith in Rimuru. One woman is overcome by an urge to slaughter the invaders, due to her concert being put on hold. Two of the jesters then politely introduce themselves, just before Maria is called inside. This woman is immediately recognized to be Granville's wife, however she died long ago. Laplace proclaims Granville is up above, awaiting to settle their feud, and will continue slaughtering her friends until she arrives. Luis lunges at Laplace, followed by Gunther taking on Footman. Then with her rage for Granville swelling, she begins her fight against the walking corpse. It's then in the now empty room that Yuki appears, effortlessly using his anti-skill to dismantle the holy coffin. This woman does have a second seal directly on her skin, and Yuki can't help but to feel like he knows her somehow. Anyways, time is of the essence, so he carries the sleeping hero away. Demon Lord Rimuru just finished his battle, and notes that none of them had a unique level skill. Hinata and Granville are still in a stalemate, although Ranga and Shion are being overwhelmed. Making matters worse, Demon Lord Leon just arrived, along with an entourage of knights. Granville is openly happy to see him, however Leon claims they've never met. Apparently Granville learned the method of summoning otherworlders from Leon, even mentioning Shizu's name. His goal is to provoke you into fighting Demon Lord Leon. Rimuru asks if Leon summoned people other than Shizu, all the while knowing it shortened their lives. He replies yes, there's a reason, you see, but Granville intervenes, stating Leon specifically sought out children. Our fuming slime dashes directly for Demon Lord Leon. Target is not defending. A massive punch collides with his cheek, causing Leon to spit blood, asking if Rimuru is happy now. That punch was only for Shizu, but it made him realize Leon may not be evil like he previously thought. Raising his sword, Rimuru declares they still have a lot to discuss. A moment earlier upon his arrival, Leon's only concern was finding Chloe, but he's relieved to see that Rimuru noticed Granville's scheme. Granville's attacks begin to change, as he admits Hinata is by far his strongest pupil, but she lacks experience when it comes to fighting someone of similar caliber. She's well aware he's taunting her, but can't help but to continue pushing harder and harder. He declares she's looking awfully fatigued, and reveals he's been purposely baiting her into tiring herself out. Well if that's so, then she might as well get serious, and Granville hopes she learns from this battle. Rain barely survives the disintegration, just as Diablo planned. He states she's weaker than Testarossa, and asks why she's here. Of course, she's refusing to talk, so he orders her to come on out already. Guy, along with Rain's real body, then appears. He wonders why Diablo tried so hard if he knew his opponent was fake, and honestly Diablo was hoping to trick Guy into losing interest in him. The Demon Lord wants to know why Diablo didn't evolve until now, which is stated to be because once he evolved, he'd be so much stronger than all of his opponents that fighting would become boring. It's strange the slime was able to influence Diablo so strongly, however it's a shame Guy's underlings are currently trashing humankind up north, though this comment is met with a laugh, as Sir Rimuru surely saw this coming. The Western Council was in chaos due to the demon's sudden attack in the north. They need to send immediate reinforcements, however they put Tempest in charge of their military, and numerous people here don't trust such a pretty monster to command them. Testarossa proclaims it's her duty to defend the West, followed by Moss confirming reinforcements have already arrived. The room is even more shocked as it's revealed that High Elf sent a dragon airship to aid them, though Moss is scolded for not showing proper respect for Rimuru's friend, Lady Elmesia. Even with this, the council was still hesitant to trust her, so Tessarosa calls out Johan Rostia as the source of this conflict. While failing to mask his nervousness, he shouts monsters can't be trusted. Soldiers then enter the room to support him, yet Testarossa is still unfazed. She announces that Johan just sent out a magic signal ordering someone to destroy this nation's defensive barrier, just as the earth quakes. The Sons of Velt then arrive, with their leader thanking Johan for the contract, followed by them summoning their deity, Velt, Misery the Demon Peer. Some time ago, the Rosos held their final meeting. Due to recent events, Granville is planning one last stand, and offers each member a choice to fight or back out. One person chooses to live on, while the rest essentially forfeit their lives, in order to sow chaos across the western nations. 
The council members are all terrified, except for Testarossa, who's confident her very presence counters their carefully crafted plans. The chairman urges her to flee and report this to Rimuru, but after a moment they realize Misery is standing still, just glaring at Testarossa. She demands to know how Blanc obtained a physical body, prompting Testarossa to order Vert to use her new name. Testarossa states Misery has no chance of winning, so knowing this to be true, Vert claims destroying Inglacia's barrier completes her mission, and thus departs. The room is in awe at the spectacle, but Velt's leader dares to attack Testarossa. Moss easily restrains him and Velt's leader is then taken away, finally realizing Misery referred to this woman as Blanc. Johan then exclaims he would have succeeded if it wasn't for this filthy demon, prompting her to simply bask in his screams and begin listing off every legal offense Johan is sure to be charged with. This day firmly cements her place in the council, and she can only wonder if her new lord had foresaw all of this from the start. Guy realizes his prank up north failed, as Diablo praises Rimuru's greatness. Realizing Blanc has been named, he asks what happened to the other two primal demons, and learns Ultima and Carrera work for Rimuru as well. In fact, Diablo is the one who invited them, which seriously pisses off Guy. But with no other choice, he will just have to pay Rimuru a visit himself. Demon Lord Guy then leaves, as Diablo is overcome with relief. Luis reveals he's a tad stronger than Roy, just as Laplace leaps away, narrowly retaining his life. Our jester complains he was lured in, but Luis is confident he can win head on. You see, Luis and Roy used to be a single troublesome vampire, however Luminous split them apart to make them easier to manage. But with Roy dead, Luis has been restored to his original power. Realizing he's outclassed, and noticing Footman is losing as well, the jesters suddenly make a hasty retreat. Now, Luminous can't bring herself to destroy Maria, as she's always envied Maria and Granville's relationship. Suddenly realizing something is amiss, she hears Gunther report the jesters are fleeing. Freezing up upon looking at where the Ark once was, she takes a direct attack. The pain actually helps her remain in control, as her rage toward Granville begins to overflow. Her power explodes into a surrounding torrent, and orders Gunther to find those invaders. You see this arc was given to her by a precious friend, and it holds a power that could destroy the entire world. Rimuru is crossing blades with Leon. When erupting from the ground, Luminous exclaims that even with those implanted unique skills, that corpse never stood a chance. She demands to know why he'd do this, but Maria's corpse transforms into magic and is absorbed by Granville. His wrinkles fade, seemingly returning him to his youth, and Luminous finally realizes what's happening. For hundreds of years, she'd been gifting Granville a bit of her power in order to slow down the human aging process. He, however, had been storing all of it inside of Maria's corpse. Corpse. Granville declares his ambition died along with Maribel, so the last thing he needs to do is settle the score with Luminous. However, he is curious why Hinata never became a real hero. It's like she has a dark secret and asks if maybe she killed a family member. She lashes out in anger but is effortlessly knocked away. With a stabbing motion, Granville launches a Melt Strike aimed directly at Chloe, whom Rimuru nor his skills can reach in time. Without hesitation, Hinata attempts to body block, but is simply pierced through. Following his orders, Venom does the same, and between the two, slow it down just enough for Rimuru to consume it. Leon is in shock from seeing Chloe, all the while Luminous declares that's too much damage to fix. Clawing her way back to consciousness, Hinata gives Chloe her sword and magic armor. Too fast to see, a glow erupts from Hinata and is sucked into Chloe. Not knowing if that was real or not, Rimuru looks around, and Leon demands to know why Chloe just vanished. I fail to understand as well. Upon her friend's death, Luminous casts Resurrection, which perfectly restores the body, but for some reason Hinata's soul has already moved on. Then with a single tear, Luminous vows to avenge her friend. The unique skill Lust has evolved into the ultimate skill as Modius, ruler of Lust. Demon Lord Luminous Valentine quietly states this isn't what was supposed to happen, then orders Granville to prepare for death. Their explosive battle snaps Rimuru back to reality, followed by him noticing a new evil aura. Its level is equal to Veldora. The smoke clears, revealing a very bare, very beautiful woman. Luminous can't believe they dared to awaken Kronoa, and Yuki asks Granville to explain the situation. It turns out this hero is currently evil incarnate known as Kronoa, and is even stronger than the Demon Lords. Granville, however, had no way to undo the seal, causing Yuki to realize he was being played this entire time. 
Her equipment is uncannily similar to Hinata's, but a lot more powerful. Narrowly dodging an attack, Rimuru knows his absolute defense stands no chance. But luckily, Kronoa is attacking indiscriminately, giving him a moment to strategize. Would you like to deploy Summon Storm Dragon? Smashing the yes button, he pleads for Veldora to come help. And why would this mighty dragon ever turn down a friend in need? Leon is trying to comprehend the situation when a magic shot narrowly misses him, but causes Kronoa to turn his way. Yuki thanks Tyr for a job well done, as Laplace says they're ready to go. Using anti-skill, they break through Luminous's barrier, allowing them to teleport away. Veldora exclaims, that's the outstandingly beautiful hero who once sealed him away. Rimuru orders him to distract Kronoa, and even though his tone of voice annoys our dragon, he agrees since he's been wanting a rematch. At this point, Leon has taken a beating and warns Rimuru she's incredibly strong. Charles introduces himself again before admitting he made a mistake in his relationship with Shizu. And thus with Charles guarding, Leon begins summoning new equipment, and Rimuru turns toward the battlefield. Abruptly, a voice rings out, pulling her from the darkness. It's explained that Void was an unlimited imprisonment, and that Chloe took in Hinata's soul to save her, but now they find themselves 2,000 years in the past. Being rightfully skeptical, Hinata learns this isn't the first time Chloe's experienced time travel, though sadly she's unable to control her power. It turns out she began seeing past memories after that spirit entered her body, so she assumes that spirit is a future version of herself that must have met a tragic end. Hinata does find some relief in the fact the time loop changes every time, as in the previous loop, Rimuru never became a demon lord and actually died fighting the East. Veldora then destroyed Tempest, followed by Hinata's death, which thus triggered Chloe's time travel ability. This, however, is the first time Rimuru was still alive when she time traveled, so just maybe if they live the next 2,000 years without altering history, he will be able to fix it. After explaining all of this, Chloe then gets very serious, declaring she won't allow Hinata to steal Rimuru away from her. They know in just a few weeks Veldora is going to Rampage, so they wish to warn their dear friend Luminous. Chloe's been through this so much she sometimes forgets what timeline she's in, leaving Hinata to worry they're going to ruin the future. Of course, Luminous is skeptical of the stranger, but she does at least evacuate the civilians. The castle is destroyed just as Chloe predicted, immediately earning Luminous's full trust and friendship. Then after explaining bits of what's to come, but leaving out a certain betrayal, Luminous agrees to aid them. Now all that's left is for Chloe to become the great hero, however for that she'll need a new name. Hinata declares her title to be Kronoa, and at that exact moment Hinata loses her skill Usurper. History continues just as they'd expect, and thus it comes time to seal away Veldora. They finally reveal Hinata is here as well, and Hinata actually demands to take control, as she's been itching for a rematch with that dragon since he beat her in the dungeon. With Veldora sealed, time goes on, until one day Chloe states she's about to disappear. Apparently, the world doesn't allow two of the same souls to exist, so she will vanish when child Chloe and Leon arrives. Now with Chloe gone, Kronoa begins fighting for control, but even so, Hinata manages to rescue Shizu, give her the mask, and become sealed within the Ark. Of course, she's absolutely terrified she may never wake up again, but she trusts that slime, who she's not seen for 2,000 years. Veldora complains her sword is sharper than last time, just as Luminous is blasted between them. She effortlessly walks back into battle, but uses thought communication to explain that Chloe and Hinata might be inside of Kronoa. Chloe and Kronoa are one and the same. This is likely due to time travel. Rimuru then finally understands why Ramirez tried to stop that spirit from entering Chloe. Our slime tells Leon to focus on defense before turning to Veldora. The dragon preemptively agrees, followed by Rimuru asking him to hold down Kronoa. Diablo suspects Gi is monitoring the battlefield, and explains how Rimuru's spirit body could dive directly inside of Kronoa. High chance of success, but equally high risk. It would be beneficial to calm her down first, prompting Charles to recommend using the mask. Hold up one second. Shizu gave Rimuru the mask. He gave it to Chloe. Then Chloe slash Hinata gave it to Shizu. So then where did the mask come from? On cue, Veldora restrains Kronoa. The mask is placed, as Rimuru's world turns black. This constant beating is taking its toll on Ranga, so Shion orders him to rest and wait for her signal. Slamming her sword into the ground, she attacks with maximum power, all the while attempting to use Master Chef to penetrate his exoskeleton. Rizul deflects, then counterattacks, exclaiming she'll never do more than scratch him. 
With Suri Maru and her rival Diablo in mind, she explodes to even greater heights, but once again is deflected. You see, at one point, Xion didn't mind dying, and even worried that Rimuru would discard her for the more powerful Diablo. However, after being resurrected, she realized both of these thoughts to be foolish. Ogre Berserker skill has evolved into the unique skill, Divine Berserker. Exploding with power, she screams now. Raga blasts her with dark lightning, followed by her lightning-infused, Master Chef-backed blade, aiming for the single scratch on Razul's arm. With a bang, her sword snaps in two, followed by Razul falling to the ground with a charred wound across his torso. Luminous still has hope for the Rimuru that Chloe told her about 2,000 years ago. This is why she's always been friendly with the slime, and heck, he's the only reason she actually attended Walpurgis. Cranville asked if she really thought Chloe would come back, prompting Luminous to realize he must have been eavesdropping all those years ago. Razul's body is then absorbed into Granville. Unique skill Nefarious has evolved into ultimate skill, sorry, Lord of Hope. With a final declaration toward one another, her crimson requiem collides with his blue fortitude. It takes a few moments for the smoke to clear, revealing Luminous still standing. Our slime is pressing forward when he's greeted by an outstandingly beautiful old friend. Then after another distance, he finds Kronoa waiting for him. Preparing himself for a sure battle, he's immediately embraced as Kronoa is so happy to be able to see him again. It's confirmed that Hinata accidentally gave her sentience due to the name Kronoa, and that she's an embodiment of corruption hidden deep within Chloe. Still very confused, he asks what's her goal, but apparently she's done rampaging since Rimuru is safe and sound. Though to his knowledge, he's always been safe, but he's reprimanded, as future Rimuru sacrificed himself to save her. Getting back on topic, you learn that Chloe is locked away inside the Unlimited Imprisonment, along with Hinata's soul, which is locked within her Measurer skill. In theory, Rimuru could implant her Measurer skill back into her real body, but Kronoa believes everything inside the Imprisonment to be a jumbled, unobtainable mess. But then Kronoa gives Rimuru permission to access it, prompting Raphael to go wild, making numerous changes, eventually transforming Kronoa into the ultimate skill, yogg sothoth Lord of Time. This earns Rimuru a kiss on the cheek, followed by Chloe's loud complaint, though Hinata thinks he looks awfully happy for someone who hasn't even confirmed he can save her. Our demon lord is so happy to see Hinata, causing her cheeks to redden. He wonders if she might have begun to like him. Negative. Apparently, the Shizu is just an illusion created from his mind, but she's still happy he punched Leon, and claims to finally be at peace with her life. Then just before exiting, Rimuru declares he will in fact save Hinata. Snapping awake, he finds himself standing over Kronoa. Without responding to anyone, Rimuru orders them to guard the area and asks Luminous for assistance. A moment ago, Luminous had her final conversation with Granville, and you find out this plan of his was all for resurrecting the one true hero. He then faded away, trusting Luminous and giving his hopes to the future hero. At present, Rimuru explains he will control the imprisonment, but needs her to carefully extract Hinata. They immediately begin the process, which swiftly reminds Rimuru just how far above him Luminous still is. After successfully retrieving, resurrecting, and implanting the soul, Hinata opens her eyes, followed by the sound of Chloe's voice. Now back in her child body, she hugs our slime, earning him glares from both Leon and Hinata. With the crisis resolved, the concert proceeds, Luminous bickers with Veldora, and Leon won't stop clinging to Chloe, his childhood friend. Also, Hinata's hero egg was left inside of Chloe. This means she contained two hero eggs, which caused them to awaken, making her a true hero. On top of this, she can transform between her child and adult body at will. Plus, Kronoa can even assist or take control, much like Raphael. Then after spending all this quality time with his friends, Rimuru vows to never show mercy to anyone who dare harm them.